stream is working. Welcome to Sun United FC TV and today we will be looking uh, at the women's team. Um, the men's team obviously and the women's team all the games are cancelled currently so we're having to dig deep and find some good content to provide for everyone here over at Sun United and today we have none other than the one and only captain on the phone Cindy Colliver welcome <laughs> Obviously, it's my first entry into the uh, sort of streaming world, so there probably will be some teething problems. Um, but it's uh, it's good to have you on here. Uh, Thank you for having me. How have you? Um, obviously, it's a shame that we've had to cut the season down to an end. Uh, but I've obviously only started working with Sutton beginning of this season, and what I wanted to ask you is. Um, from your experience from first joining the club what's the growth of the team and yourself as a player obviously becoming captain like how do you feel the club has moved along since you've been there so i joined at the start of last season so the 2018-19 season um and i think the club had been going for a few years before that um and they had like back-to-back league wins and stuff um, so it was already a well established team and it was just a case of kind of joining, settling in and seeing how it was going from there um, in terms of growth, like obviously winning the league last year was great but we had quite a big um, turnover of people and squad like, people leaving people joining and stuff so it was good to settle down this year and I think we hit the ground running quite quickly um, as a group and became quite a cohesive unit quite quickly um, and yeah I mean being made captain was obviously a massive honour like nothing I've never had that at any other club I've been at I've been vice captain at a couple of, of other teams but it's a big step up um, we've got quite a young squad so to kind of use the experience that I've got to help them through it um, myself and obviously a few of the other girls are a bit more experienced um, so yeah I think we've developed I think we're always a team that's going to want to be striving for like league wins and cups and things um I feel like the, the style of play that we've played this season is probably a bit more high tempo, on the floor, it's kind of, I don't want to say tricky like we're trying to copy Barcelona or something, because we're not that, but um, in terms of style of play, I think we are slightly more entertaining to watch than maybe we were last year. It was a little bit more direct last year, where this year we're quite comfortable in possession, and I think the stats for most of the... Most of our home games, especially, has been quite high in terms of percentage for us. So, yeah, I think we're like we're we're a good team. We're moving forward. And obviously, we were in a good position before um, the current situation. So it's a bit disappointing to kind of have the the league stopped because obviously we were second and kind of pushing new London Lionesses. Um, but yeah, I think we're a good we're a good team. <laughs> well. As you said, um, there is a big mixture of very young players and a few more experienced players in terms of the natural uh, age between you know any sort of footballer. How do you feel that the blend of um, some of these women, including um, yourself, who you know some of these players who've been playing for more than five, six, seven years, and five, six, seven years ago, it wasn't anything like what it is now and there is there was a lot of a, a graph to come towards and obviously there's now more and more opportunities for young women to get to play football um, which obviously must be a good thing but how how does it feel going through that stage where you're having to fight to find somewhere to play I mean I would say nowadays without sounding really old um, there's far more opportunities for girls and women looking to play football than there have ever been before like obviously with the World Cup and the massive push the Super League's got with sponsorship and stuff this year was amazing um, so in terms like when I was younger there was very few teams around apart from like the Premier League teams that would have centre of excellence and stuff um, there was obviously little leagues that you could go and play at but other than that it was quite hard to find like local sides I think the girls now have so much opportunity and teams that are available for them at so many different levels like you can start like really 
grassroot and build your way up or obviously if you're capable and have the ability you can start straight into an academy and kind of build from there and there's a nat- real natural progression now for the younger girls to kind of hit that top level obviously providing they're good enough but I think there's definitely um, steps that they can take now that sounded a little bit envious um, that, like myself and the more mature players in the team like didn't have those opportunities so I think it's great to kind of have teams around that we can help and like use our experience to help the younger girls kind of build that and kind of learn from where we've come from to the setups that are available now. Um, another question regarding the difference between uh, the slight age gap in the team. Obviously, in the last uh, year or two, Sutton, uh, well, I mean, for a while now, but most recently and noticeably, the the women's team have been playing very sort of um, on the floor, fast, fluid football and trying to make it look pleasant as well as being successful. Um, do you have any experiences in the past of where it was mainly rough and physical and you didn't have that get the ball on the ground and try and create something? Yeah, definitely. Like um, Even like five, six years ago, so not like massively long ago, there was matches that were happening on like Hackney Marsh years and that you have them clap and come. I mean, they're still happening now. But... Um, the, like some of the players you would play against would be like much older than you and much more physical so I think the style of play was much more kind of stoke away on a rainy night in kind of terms of really physical like you know you were going to have to kind of maybe go a bit direct and maybe a bit long in terms of play um, where now I think that the technical ability of some of the players that we have in our team like Jennifer Nevis for example has the work is insane so to have kind of those players now like I've, my game's adapted from when I was like 18, 19 to where I am now I would say I'm more comfortable playing the passing game because that's something I've had to start doing because of the style of football that the Sutton play and previous teams I've played for so um, I think in terms of our team I think there's a good mix of players that can move the ball quickly I think we're all capable of passing and comfortable in possession so I think like, in terms of we still get games like we had this season where you're playing on Hackney Marshes and it's raining and the pitch is horrible and the surface is awful. You have to adapt your play. But I think that's just the learning curve for us as a group, really. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, as the years go by, um, the playing surfaces for every team will be the exact same good standard and the, you know the quality of football can improve around the whole areas, not just the ones who can afford it. Um, but uh, one thing as far as I'm aware obviously it, women's football is being quite underfunded even in the top top tier um, so we can't necessarily expect miracles to happen at first but Sutton do have that real luxury of having that pitch at Gander Green Lane where obviously I, I'm, am I right to say you train there as well? We do, yeah. We're really fortunate as well. Like we're able to use the the Pit, so like the, what people would know as the men's home ground. Um, we're like really fortunate we can use that. We train on that um, once and twice a week, and obviously our home games are on there as well for the first team. Um, the under twenty ones home games are on there a few times as well. So I think I think some of the youth team get that experience as well. So we're really lucky. Like some of the teams I've played for before, like um, they don't get to play at the men's team even at the highest level like for example you look at teams like Arsenal and Tottenham and Chelsea they don't play at Stamford Bridge the Emirates kind of those kind of grounds like they have done this season like one-off games um, but overall like most clubs don't the women's setup don't get to have the same experience pitch quality wise as the men's team um, and as you say like funding wise obviously it's quite difficult um, but I think like the Super League teams get to use some lower league men's teams. I know, like, uh, Arsenal play at Boron Woods, so they get to use that surface, which is obviously better than a park or something like the equivalent. Um, so I don't really know what the solution is, but I think in terms of quality of play, the more good quality pitches that are available, the, the better the quality of football will become. Um, the women's games are actually quite lucky like Super League teams can use the 4G pitches in like the Super League rather than like the men's team obviously when Arsenal had to play certain men's team in the FA Cup there was a bit of a 
issue with the like consideration of the pitch. Mm. Um, but in women's football, there's not that legislation or any problems with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, we're lucky. I mean, we don't live in the best climate sometimes, so the pitches aren't always great in terms of being nice, smooth um, surfaces. But um, you got to work with what you've got, really, haven't you? <laughs> Um, with your experience playing on all types of surfaces, do you not notice much of a difference between the 4G pitch, or do you um, do you still find it a bit of a shock when you may have had, say, two home games back to back, and then an away game, and you're back on the muddy, uneven surface? There's definitely um, like a moment of needing to adapt. Like the surface at um, Sutton is, and Gander Green Lane is obviously great and you don't have to consider that there, there might be a bubble or a divot or, or, or anything like you can just trust your touch and you know the ball will come to you um, so when you move to grass obviously there is that consideration that the surface isn't necessarily going to be completely smooth um, so yeah I mean we work on that in the warm up when we have away games and we're on grass to kind of get your touch in early and make sure that we're zipping the ball at each other so we're ready for that kind of slight variation to what we're used to um, well, one of the questions we've got on the live chat was uh, from James asking, "How did you get into football? Um, was it were you playing from a young age, or a supporter, or both?" <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was quite a shy kid, so my mum um, thought football and little league would be quite a good idea to get me into socialising with people as like a group setup. So, um, so I started at like the age of six at Malden Little League, playing there. Um, kind of played all the way through until I was like 12, 13. Um, and then from there I started playing for Wimbledon Football Club Centre of Excellence before they got moved to Milton Keynes. Um, and was there for two years until they did get moved to Milton Keynes. And then I kind of had a bit of a gap from there through to like when I was at uni and I was doing some coaching for Fulham's um, Football Foundation in the community. Um, and one of the girls I was working with there, she was like, oh, I've got like, like a team that I'm playing for, should come down and kind of got back into playing like adult level football at like 18, 19. And I've kind of been playing throughout then to maybe a decade, <laughs> if we're talking ages. Um, but yeah, um, I've always followed football, massive Chelsea fan. Sorry, Duncan, I know you won't like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so I do I watch a lot of football and I enjoy going to games and yeah it's just something that I really like having which is why it's so weird at the moment not having anything to watch oh, or even I, play it is it is so difficult um, I have a tiny little like four foot goal in my back garden for my nephew and I've just <laughs> I've been hitting the same five shots every day back and forth just to <laughs> give myself something to do um, but speaking of uh, Duncan, uh, the manager, uh, he actually has just commented, and having just heard what you've said um, about you know being playing uh, well ever since you were six years old in little league, but then from seventeen eighteen onwards, um, how did it feel when you were made captain of Sutton, uh, your first captaincy? Um, yeah, no, it was amazing. It wasn't something I expected actually. Um... Obviously, the year before, I'd only just joined, so I was quite new to the group. Um, and obviously, there was um, last year's captain left, so there was a need for a new one. Um, but for not for a second, like I said, it would be me. Um, but no, Duncan, he asked me, and he was like, I want you to like, lead by example and stuff. And I was like, well, I kind of had that role without it being official on the pitch anyway. It was a case of kind of just calming people down around me and... Um, just kind of making sure the energy's up and making sure people are concentrating and stuff. So, yeah, it was a massive honour being asked. Um, and it's always quite nice on a match day pulling the captain's armband on. It's like a bit of, yeah, we're good to go, ready to do the girls out. So, yeah, massive honour. And um, obviously hearing about how many years you've been playing, have you always been a centre-half or did you have you switched it up in the past? No, so actually when I was a child, I was a goalkeeper. Ah. <laughs> being quite tall. Um, so Little League, I was in goal. Um, and then when I came back to football as a teenager, I was a fullback, um, right and left, depending where they needed me. <laughs> um, and then the it's only been position. the last yeah, <laughs> utility player. Um, and then over the last four to five years, I've been playing centre back. Um, and I think it's a natural progression, really, as you get to know the game, you kind of drop 
inwards and <laughs> back if you're more of an attacking player. But um, from a defensive point of view, yeah, just clock in into the middle, you kind of get to read the game more. Obviously, you have more of a slight aerial threat in there as well. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoy I enjoy playing centre back. Now, you said you're a Chelsea fan, um, uh-huh. and I know recently, um, because I was seeing them celebrate when I was working, um, the Chelsea women's team, they won uh, the cup. And I was wondering how you were, how, uh, I don't want to word this in an offensive way, <laughs> but um, do you watch much women's football? As someone who's been a football fan, obviously, your whole life, um, there is, we had the World Cup where it was really predominantly shown. And then you BT, I think, have it um, at the moment for the Super League. But it still doesn't necessarily get the limelight that it should in order to get more people on it. I'm interested in whether you, as a female footballer, do you try and seek out other women's football? Um, I have done recently, myself and um, Tamara Graham, the centre midfielder at Sutton. We've gone to a few um, Chelsea games because they play quite locally at um, Kings Meadow. Um, so we've been going to watch them get their games in Super League and the Champions League and stuff. Um, like you say, the, the World Cup was quite highly broadcast um, across platforms and stuff um, and so I have I have I always keep an eye on the, the England team just to see how they're doing obviously World Cups and Euros and qualifying and stuff and the obviously she believes Cup last year which they they won um, but yeah I mean the, the it's it's really different it's a different style of football I, I think to compare the two is always going to cause controversy in terms of the speed and there is obviously always going to be a difference in terms of athleticism between male and female players there's not a lot you can do about that I think even if you get like the pinnacle of a female player and then try and compare them to like Cristiano Ronaldo it's not going to be the same like Mm. there is always going to be a difference Um, and I just don't think financially there's going to be the back in for a good while that there is in the men's game in terms of sponsorship marketing and the kind of the things that they can feed back then into the grassroots level yeah. Um, so I think you kind of have to consider it as a slightly different sport. I think it is improving, and I think as entertaining, and as in, start again in terms of entertainment, <laughs> I think it is entertaining. It's just a case of not looking at it in the same way that you would necessarily look at a men's game. Obviously, it's the same sport, but I think there there is variances. But it's different because like, even in cricket, like you get women's cricket and men's cricket, and there's never the comparisons that you get in football. Um, so it's one of those things. I think it's getting better. People are more used to seeing women's football on TV, and um, obviously Alex Scott's doing great stuff as a pundit on um, Sky Sports and stuff. So that that's good in terms of getting recognition and people being more aware that there are women uh, out there that do understand football and are able to kind of have an opinion in a way that is not the stereotypical way um, I've just got an interesting question as we're on the topic of women's football from uh, Saha uh, apologies if I butchered the pronunciation I've never actually heard it out loud um, uh, do you think that the women's game should move to the summer to allow it to have more spotlight and keep it almost separate from the men's that is actually a really good question they did that a few years ago didn't they they made it a summer league um, and I think the attendance is were much higher because I think people and families especially were using it as a, a way of like a day out and stuff to go and get like, their football fix um, so possibly if in, I think in, to try and get it to compare like if you've got a, a women's game and you've got Chelsea versus Man City women at 3 o'clock but then you've also got like a Super Sunday or whatever and then you've got the, the men's equivalent I think to kind of I think they attract different audiences but you're never going to get the whole push that you would normally get for a match so possibly I mean I know the FA are looking at lots of different ways to try and push the women's game forward um, so that could be definitely one way to go about it um, another question that we've just uh, had in the chat is um, what are your aims um, and sort of uh, goals for the rest of your career in football would obviously we'd love to see Sutton keep climbing up the ranks but do you um do you see more in the future? And obviously, that's not us saying. Do you want to leave Sutton? But um, do you? Yeah. Where do you, where do you see? Where do you set your sights when it comes to playing football? Um, 
I think you have to be realistic. I know that I'm coming towards the, the latter stages of my career more than um, some of the other girls are. Um, so for me, I have played in the league above where Sutton were last year and, and won that league, but didn't manage to take the step up with that team. Um, so for me, that, that level would be, then be the, the national league. So I think for me, it's a case of seeing how far I can get in the years I have left, but that's actually really depressing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, what they they treat uh, footballers like racehorses these days. They a little bit. <laughs> they turn three years old and suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah. I mean, my my goals and aims would be to try and win as much as I can with my teams that I'm playing for. Obviously, starting at the moment, um, and try and w- get that. So that's what was really disappointing about this season because obviously we got to the the cup final, which is um. It's only been postponed at the moment, not cancelled, so fingers crossed that actually happens. Yeah, um, I'd love to commentate a little final. <laughs> yeah, but to, to get that promotion and kind of just see how far and how high, because the quality's changed. Like, there's leagues that I've played in when I was younger that to play in that league now, the quality of teams in that league is much higher than it was when I was there previously. So, because of the um, improvement to women's football, to just try and push yourself as far as you can and just see how far you can get. <laughs> Oh, I think yeah, one hundred percent. Because yeah, you just never know what could happen in the grand scheme of things. Um, and I think that the one thing that I've learned over the last year of working with Sutton is that the argument that the proportions of the pitch compared from the men's game and the goals compared to the men's game and the women's game um, that's been proven complete farcical to me. Because whether it's Paige or Zoe, um, and the ball's been aiming for the very top right corner, they've managed to make saves comfortable. And well, we, we we've seen, and we might see when I put some highlights through. We have seen some times where um, some of the opposition's teams of keepers have come out and they've been easily lobbed. But in my opinion, from game to game, from uh, first whistle to last the standard and the way people play it doesn't matter that they're on a pitch that supposedly doesn't match their statures physically I think that it's clearly proven that you guys can deal with the exact same measurements and it'd be almost silly to change it that dramatically yeah no I agree when I saw um that story come out it did annoy me a little bit because it's like well, we've, we've always played on pitches obviously the game of football has variances in size of pitches anyway you have like the minimum and maximum measurements um, and as someone that is nearly six foot it's obviously a little bit mean to be like oh we should play on a smaller pitch because I'm thinking hang on a minute I'm like the same size as some of the, the men's players so now why am I I mean Messi would be looking up by should. quite a few feet <laughs> Messi would be looking up a couple of feet, uh, a couple of inches at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I might be looking in line with the crossbar. Um, but and, yeah, I don't know. I don't think. It, I think it's a bit drastic to be talking about smaller pitches and. And also, and I can imagine. Goals. I can imagine that would only frustrate the likes of um, Darcy and Tamara and Gabby because they that would give them less goal to aim for. And oh, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's got good aim, so I think we, it could be a posted stuff and they still hit the target. But um, <laughs> in terms of, like, yeah, I, I just think it's, I think it, to say on one hand you want the women's game to be taken seriously and then on the other hand to be like, oh, we need to make these drastic changes, I think it's a bit of a, a contradiction in the statements. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. Um, there's not many very, there's not many nuances for other sports to separate the gender, so there's not many, much reason for it to happen in football I think that people were watching the Women's World Cup for the first time compared to the men's and they see that you know the standard isn't the same because some of these football a lot the way I see it a lot of these footballers have built from the ground up from like five years old and onwards whereas even some of the women playing for national teams they might have um, football might not be their main priority because they've got other things that they need to do because their football might not be funded properly in that nation. Yeah, definitely. I think if you can 
makes you sort of with a career, then you can obviously approach it differently to if you're you've got another job and then kind of it was more, more than a hobby, but kind of along those same lines. Um, and then kind of at that national level, I think the women's game is always going to be a little bit slower, and I don't think by reducing the size of a pitch, it's necessarily going to speed it up in that sense. Um, so I think I think it was a, a solution to a possible problem that wasn't there. Maybe. I don't know. I, th- I think there, there are ways of improving it, and I kind of got kind of where they were coming from, but I just I don't think it's the solution. <laughs> no. Um, and obviously, let's go back to the topic of Sutton, um, because Duncan's chipped in with, uh, this time Sophia, who doesn't have a YouTube account apparently, has, um, has asked, she wants to know what's the best goal that you've ever scored? Um, I scored a goal last season which is probably actually definitely the best goal I've ever scored um, it was an away game against AFC Phoenix it was a game we actually won the league just to put a little cherry on it and brag a bit <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a free kick that was about 30 yards out and I just got this weird I wasn't on free kicks it wasn't my job but I just kind of thought oh you know what I kind of want it so I said to the, the captain I was like can I take it she was like yeah go for it and I managed to put it in the top corner and um, I think I was just shocked as everyone else was that it went in. Um, but it was like, I was, I was quite proud of it. It was, it was a rocket of a free kick. But um, when I've gone to take free kicks this season, it's not quite gone as well. I have got some stick from talking about taking them off um, Darcy, Gabby and Tamara. So I might leave that to them from now on. Well, you, you do say that, but... Sutton have been incredibly successful with free kicks this season. I've witnessed at least three or four successfully gone in, um, whether it's been Darcy or Tamara. I think Gabby's got one as well. And, um, yeah, you can tell that there's a group of you hanging around the edge of the penalty box to practice them at training because you you all want to have a go. And, uh, I mean, I've not seen your screamer because I wasn't there, but um, you've you've all got them in you. And I think that um, we have seen some cracking goals this season and the performances overall have been really good. What have been some of your best performances so far this season? Um, I think um, as an overall team performance, the the game against Clapham United that we played at the start of this year, I think it was a kind of game that was really Long ball comes across and it's going to fall through. It's in. I've been completely left flat on my feet there. Just as I was waiting, the ball was sent long. We believe Butler got a touch and it just seems to float over the goalkeeper's head. Sutton just playing very nicely at the moment, just keeping the possession, trying to find space and passes long and hoping that one of their forwards, whether it's Campus Lennon or Nottingham can get on the end of it. Because that goal would have been the cherry on the game. Very nicely at the moment, just keeping the possession, trying to find space and passes. Great bit of work there from Hal. And small. Yeah, that is one of the Wells games. That looking is, um, for an option, she finds Butler. Butler comes deep. Graham's going to have a shot. She can really hit him. Oh, and even though the keeper um, got the both hands on the ball, the, it was so uh, powerful that it just powers um, people, right into the right hand side of the net. Yeah, and that was Tamara uh, Graham. 30 with yarder, the goal. 25 yarder, maybe, if we're being. Uh, Wells is having to come across the left hand side. Wells is found by Nebit really well. Turned out I was actually not playing, I was only playing uh, our commentary 
and not, and not any of the, uh, the video. <laughs> but I've got it sorted now, and I'm going to put myself out of the shot. So you can watch that. Actually, let's go straight to the new London it car just because that was much more... Uh, we just talked about how good it was. We may as well let people see it. <laughs> It is just I think as a whole, everyone um, but Kiz Fergus the is way in the that, box for uh, New London trying to defend the this. Season. The ball um, is coming in, looking for how we it comes out to Clark, who has a shot, style of play that we and it just goes wide to, the post. It looks the as though the keeper had it covered. Way. And you're trying to figure out which some, teams are going to be the ones that are going for the, the top ground. They score and which ones are going to against Clapham United uh, last week. Almost and it comes off the head, the you back of the head of we could New London. Just be teams that we have to play. Um, and to I think that it's a good ball after a while, She's just as soon as we started to realise that to there's not really anyone in this league that we can't beat, or at least New London Lionesses. I cause a fright. Nearly the whole eleven for New we London will, are in the box, and that's we suddenly got that confidence, from, and we had oh, uh, we've had two really safe, good unbeaten oh, runs. The rebound um, is tapped in. I believe it's just the one cup game Fergus that we've lost in 2020. As her tenth goal um, in all competitions, in the league, we haven't lost. As New London uh, now, I believe two entirely nil. this year, and it's been. Well, the longer it, it keeps going, Graham. it's just going to be an even bigger Tries to turn, run. But the ball gets deflected and now it's in space. Number 17 <laughs> for New London. She's through on goal. Nebbit is chasing in. It's a great save by Hersey. She comes out, makes herself big and strong. Looking for the small and agile forward for New London. The number 10 has in now, and it comes through. Number 6 tries to beat Neves, but she's very strong. And she does brilliantly, the 17-year-old, to get the ball clear. That could have easily been a two-on-one situation for New London. Riley plays it to Neves. Riley comes across. Neves brings the ball in. Oh, Clark can't bring it down, but Neves here. Can Neves get a shot away? Oh, she stumbles. She does get a shot away, and it's 2-1. The centre-half moves to left-back. She's now got herself in a lovely left-wing position. She wins the ball from the cross from Neves. It looks as though she was out of touch and she wasn't going to be able to reach it. But it was almost as if the new London Lionesses gave her time to play our football as well as we can. <laughs> I do apologise for uh, those watching if I've been royally messing up with the stream and the clips. Um, I'm kind of learning on the go. But I think I've figured it out, and you should just be hearing just me and uh, Cindy. Um, but I'm looking over at these clips, and you, um, you, there's arguably maybe five or six that can chop and change, but you've got a pretty uh, cohesive back four that you've worked with, whether it's been you and Evie, or you and Alex, or you, Evie, Emily, and Jennifer. Um, it's pretty much the same it has been for a lot of the season the same every time and you have had well a f I believe three clean sheets out of the last seven if my stats are remembered properly and I think that you have improved defensively as the season's gone on and is that down to just good cohesion or are you just getting better and better on the training pitch? Um, I think we had a bit of chop and chase, like you were saying, um, Jen playing right back, that's a new position for her this season, she's not played there before. Um, and we had um, Evie and Emily come in, both quite young players, playing at left back. Me and Alex played centre back together last year, so there was kind of a little bit of um, fluidity between the way we played. Um, but yeah, there has been some chopping and changing. Um, we have been working on that training ground to see how we can improve certain areas, and that's something the coaches are great at. Us at. And if there's something that we've messed up with on the match day, then by the time we go training, there's like a drill to help fix it so we can progress and kind of build as a team. Um, I mean, all the girls that play at the back and across the pitch are more than capable of doing so. It's just a case of working as a unit to kind of keep teams out as we can at the back. Um, it's been a minute and a half so far and on the pitch we've nothing to really claim for keepers making their way out onto the pitch yeah, how's gone for a lot <laughs> um i've just got i've just put on the highlights of sutton versus uh victoire i don't know i never know how to <laughs> victoire i think victoire is right victoire and um 
obviously the one thing the the formation is pretty much the same every week usually with with a few changes in between maybe in in the game but um oh duncan's just reminding us that the goal Levy scored had 62 passes in the build-up there you go see <laughs> It, it. <laughs> it really is what it really is one of those. Um, if if Barcelona did this, you wouldn't stop talking about it. Um, moments, it kind of is, yeah. <laughs> but let's not pat ourselves on the back too much. Uh, <laughs> speaking of pat on the back, um, ironically, the the clip we're just seeing is um, Faye scoring a goal with the ball cannoning off her own back. Um, <laughs> she's not even facing the direction of the goal, but she's managed I to. Think that was my shot. It was your shot. shot. Yeah. <laughs> you and you and uh, you and Faye linked up well that game. You set her up uh, both times. <laughs> it's true, actually. We know each other so well, don't you? <laughs> and yeah, um, I well, about it. I just know where she is. I, I, Faye is Faye is a completely different. She's such a more dynamic. Well, dynamic might not necessarily be the word, but she's such a different aspect to the team compared to the three always behind her. Um, yeah. And she's not, I mean, she's no slouch. She's not slow, but the way that her, uh, the way that she's built and the way that she goes more for the strength and holding the ball up, it allows for the likes of Darcy, um, Clark and such to get in, in between. And uh, I'll try, sorry that we had to show you missed the penalty, Faye. <laughs> sorry, Faye. But she did get one back at the end of it. It's all right. She did. This is true. She's got a few hat tricks this season as well. No, she's it's been. Just to call um, Faye dynamic. I think she is. <laughs> she's more than capable up there. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean in terms of stature. There's there's very few like kind of old school strikers in the women's games in the way that Faye is. Um, she's obviously a physical presence up there. Um, it's quite nice having someone else in the team that's like the same same size player as me. To be honest. Um, I feel less unique um, but yeah no, her hold up play and kind of the way she can take the ball on and allows the other players to come in whether that's Darcy Gabby Hayley Clark like you said or even players like Aaron McNicholas and um, Hayley Alpha coming into the team um, it's just a nice way of playing it's a formation that's worked for us really well this season um, and the movement behind her is always good and the, the transitions they make off her so I know it's something they're working in, on in training as well but yeah um, I think one of the things that we've seen a lot of this season is well, the one thing that I was uh, interested in was the the way Duncan uses the roll on roll off subs um, and the way that you can give someone maybe just a five minute the last five minutes of the second half and then the last 20 minutes, sorry, the last five minutes of the first half, and then the last 20 minutes of the second half, and they suddenly just, you know, they could be almost two completely different uh, players at either end because something maybe Duncan said or just their own attitudes have changed. And do you try and use the substitutes? Obviously, sometimes they're injuries, but do you try and use them as a good advantage to just maybe confuse the opposition, play, play slightly differently? Uh, because you can have Darcy up top on her own and then all of a sudden you bring Faye on and the style of play will change all of a sudden. Yeah, definitely. We're really fortunate in um, the amount of options we have, especially in the attacking area. Um, and all of them are capable of having an impact on the game and the results and such. Um, in terms of substitutions, it's something that I've played with both roll on, roll off and the uh, standard free sub rule. Um, and it is something, it does change the games. Different teams treat it in different ways. Like I've played some managers that use it as you would do normal substitutions in terms of obviously your standard three. But um, I think it, it gives the girls more options in terms of putting all their energy into the first, uh, their, like their initial starts, to be honest. Like for the first 20 minutes of the match, like say, for example, Gabby can go hell for leather and know that there's someone capable of coming to replace her if she, she needs a little. I would say rest because there's nothing wrong with Gabby's fitness but in terms of like it just refreshes the team and sometimes like I know as a defender if suddenly the part of the player your marking has been substituted and they change the shape it's much harder to kind of get your head around oh wait where's my player gone who am I picking up and then kind of those moments where we can capitalise and get get some goals and kind of punish the other team um, so yeah I mean Duncan and the coaching team are really good at kind of understanding how the game's going and kind of seeing where we need to change stuff and if we do 
um, and also really good at giving people opportunities and stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it it kind of gives players that option. Like for example, like you say, if someone comes on and like for five minutes it's not quite working, they can come off, and then you kind of have a, more of a chat with your coaches and understand how you can have more of an impact on the game and kind of come straight back on at your next opportunity and kind of influence the game that way. Um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask, um, as we've been uh, self-isolating for the last, well, what feels like a month or so by now, um, have you been, how's, how's it been trying to maybe keep up with fitness or to just maybe keep your touch on? Obviously, everyone was using toilet paper as good practice for a good week. and um, But obviously now as as it's settling in and how it might be something that goes on for a bit longer than we necessarily anticipated, are you having to maybe consider trying to get some football in, whether it's going out somewhere on your own or at home? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, no matter how long the period of play that you don't play for, um, your touch can always get a little bit rusty. So it's definitely a case of trying to keep up with that and try and, if you have, like, I'm quite fortunate I have a garden at home so I can go out there and kind of work on my touch just keeping up with some stuff um, in terms of fitness though I know a lot of the girls are getting their workouts on and kind of going for their daily runs and um, kind of I think we're, we're quite good in that respect as a squad like we're quite responsible in terms of understanding fitness um, obviously the football side of it is much harder because it's always quite hard to kind of in isolation play football by yourself um, but I think like, as a group we, we, we like to try hard and try and sort of take it as serious as we need to in terms of making sure we're ready for whenever it is that we're, we're back up in training. 100%. Um, how's the morale been as a team? Are you keeping in contact? Have you been doing the... Have you been doing quiz nights and stuff? <laughs> we haven't done any quiz nights yet, no. We, um, we obviously did the, the toilet roll challenge, so that had a bit of a bit of a run in our um, WhatsApp group and stuff. Um, we, we are staying in contact and kind of... You still get the... The slightly quieter girls maybe don't say as much as some of the more vocal amongst us um, but yeah no, we're staying in contact and keeping up with what a child is doing stuff like social media makes that so much easier as well doesn't it 100 percent um i've just had another question come through do you prefer ch- uh, attacking in the collingwood or the ggl end when you're at home so you know what i'm going to be really naive and kind of work out which, which one's which because <laughs> <laughs> i do have a preference um so I prefer attacking, which I believe is the Collingwood end second half. So I like to start the game attacking the Gander Green Lane end first. That is just my preference. Uh, <laughs> I think as a last home game we spoke about it, and I was trying to work out from like when I go up to the coin toss of which way round we want to go. And I think it's only me and Tamara that have preference. But um, yeah, I do. I, I prefer going that way. I couldn't agree more because the one charity game that I played at Gander Green Lane, I played going that way first half and going the other way second half, and we won. So I, I, uh, I have to agree with you on that one. Um, how, obviously, how frustrating is it to that your last game uh, for Sutton? I believe it was our last game. Apologies if I got this wrong. We got ourselves into a cup final only to then not know when that final is going to be taking place um, because there's not many yeah. there's not many tournaments that have got up to in, in actual football that have got up to the final stage yet um, and to know that that's just the one game left to play is um, really frustrating yeah I mean you, you know that there is really frustrating um, but it was the last game we played as, um, against Crystal Palace and we, we beat them to get to the, the final um, it's frustrating because obviously we put everything into that match because we wanted to get to a final and obviously try and win a tr- win a trophy um, I mean the game is only postponed at the moment so there's still a little bit of hope that maybe we'll get to play that game um, but yeah I mean it's frustrating but there's not a lot we can do about it we have to understand obviously the current circumstances are difficult and we have to make do with what what we can um, but I mean worst case scenario the game doesn't happen that just means next season we go out and we try and win a league and win as many cups as we can next year instead um, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this but if um, you, you never know they might uh, get me and any of I, 
I would say they might get me to interview another woman on the team, but I'm not necessarily sure if anyone <laughs> would want to. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sure there would be someone. <laughs> they always seem so angry at me when I picked them for interview. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't call it anger, Connor. <laughs> well, it's almost just like, ah, oh, I didn't play that well, did I? <laughs> it's like, yes, you did. Um, but I think that the way... Oh, what? No, can't just... What, making stuff up now I believe that what we've seen throughout oh Duncan's put his word in helping me out what do you think about the young players in the team and do you believe that we have uh, some stars of the future um, before you answer that I uh, and I'm sure you, uh, you've heard this before but I, I think everyone is in agreement that um, Jennifer has been superb every single time I've seen her play uh, and when I found out she was uh, 17 years old, I think, yeah, 17? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's 17. When I found out she was 17 years old, I was absolutely baffled, and I thought that um, she has the potential to go as far as can be. I mean, I would not disagree with that at all. Um, Jen is generally one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, um, and she's an incredibly talented footballer. Her, as I said earlier, her footwork is amazing. Just check out the toilet roll video if you just want to get an example of that. But yeah, no, she's been so consistent this year, and she went from playing um, on the wing last year to being a right back this year, which I know she wasn't overly keen on to start with in terms of knowing what to do and stuff. But, well, it's, um, a, it's a more thankless role. I think we'll all agree yeah, with it that. Definitely is, yeah. But she works that that line. She runs up and down for the whole ninety minutes relentlessly and delivers well, some top quality crosses for the, for the attacking players and just her composure on the ball is is great so yeah Jen is definitely I've just seen Duncan so she's not going anywhere we're not letting her go yet no I, I <laughs> want her yeah, to no. stay Duncan but <laughs> you, you... Stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no I... breaking news Jennifer Nevers is still paying for <laughs> Jennifer Nevers rejects rejects new contract talks <laughs> So I have a word with her. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, Jen. Jen is definitely up there in terms of quality young players. But we've we've got loads of them. Like Evie Nivett, for example, is really young, playing left back. Emily Wilson, the same. I think they're both sixteen or seventeen. I don't want to kind of make them too young or too old. But they're both <laughs> kind of that age. Um, and then even across the back, like even Alex is like still early late teens, early twenties. I'm just trying to think. I'm going through the squad in my head really quickly. But Darcy Wells, for example, that has played for some really high quality teams, but she's still only 21. And when you consider that and her ability, I think there's so many girls in the squad, the first team and the under 21s, that if they they get the opportunity to show what they're capable of, they can definitely go as far as they want to in this game. Uh, 100%. And I've, uh, there's nothing that I've. There's, there's no evidence to sit. Sorry. There is nothing but evidence to suggest that these uh, these players are more than cap well are capable of leading Sutton to more and more success. Because to for us to have gone from one league straight into the other and be contending to get out of this league, it just shows the quality that we do have throughout. Um, yeah, definitely. And uh, Zoe, um, our cup final, our cup semi final keeper, and. Uh, said is there anything that you've worked on at training this season that you think has particularly paid off on match days thanks um, <laughs> <laughs> the cat McNulty um, yeah I, I think we, we work on playing out from the back quite a lot and I think that's something that as a back four I'm probably being slightly defensively biased but um, we work with the goalkeepers and kind of work on how we're going to build up from there and styles of options that we have like you can obviously go to myself or Alex whoever's playing centre half or out to the full backs and kind of into midfield so I think we worked on that quite a lot at the start of the season I think that's something that has definitely paid off I think if you see Tamara Graham's goal from the I think it's Clapham United game the build up play from the back to then end up in an attacking opportunity I think that probably paid off oh 100% and uh, I'm going to get the Clapham game back up again if anyone wants to look at it. Um, James King has just messaged in and says uh, Sutton United women versus men's match needs to happen. 
And if it did, what would you reckon the result would be? I personally think that the the men's team uh, would be relatively cocky and um, think that they could maybe just sort of play it long and maybe try and throw you off and then all of a sudden you'd spring a few passes together and you'd start playing it out the back and all of a sudden Darcy's just put one past the keeper and they've had, they have to wake up and sort their ideas out. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I think it. I think it'd be a good, good thing to happen. I mean, obviously, Sutton's a great club in terms of allowing us to feel part of the club. Um, so yeah, cheeky little friendly between the, the men and the women. Why not? Um, in terms of result, I think you might be right. We might we might shock them a little bit. They might be a little bit, as you say, cocky in terms of how the game will go. But yeah, you never know. I, I mean, I just. There's only one way to find out, isn't there, really? We've not given them a lot of love on this stream, but they'd have to try and get past um, Tamara and Keisha, which is a no, t- no, no tall order. No, I mean, we are so fortunate. We probably have one of the best, or I would say the best midfield in the league, to be honest. Both of them, their work rate and their mental. It's quite nice as a centre half, people kind of putting that work rate in front of you. Um, but they can both. They're both quite complete players in terms of they can both attack they can both defend they can both dribble they can both pass like and they, they work what? quite well together like tomorrow's quite happy to sit and let Keisha go high, press high um, and kind of dic- dictate play from back there um, yeah they're, they're definitely two players but I think you notice when they're not there they, they're probably putting words in Duncan's mouth but um, <laughs> two of the first names on the, the team sheet to be honest because they're both they, they're both quality players um, as as captain, um, you are one of the bigger biggest talkers on the pitch. Uh, you and I'd say Gabby and Tamara like to um, get the word in when you may maybe need to give the rest of the players uh, like a rally. But I think the the one thing I've noticed is that you feel the need whenever there might be a moment where you may have just like conceded a good chance or conceded a goal you like to keep everyone in a sort of small group so that you can talk to them and get them just... It's your intentions to just either get them angry and think, why are we losing or why are we playing like this? Or do you try and just in, like rally them up to be like, come on, we can do this? I think it depends on the situation. I think if if we are playing horrendously, then I'm, I'm not afraid to tell them that I think we're doing so. But likewise, they know if I'm playing badly, they can tell me the same thing. There's no... Like one-sided way on it, um, but I think yeah, it's good to have a, a a chat, whether it be brief or otherwise, as a group, just because you know those things from different areas of the pitch. Like at the back, we might notice something where maybe the attackers have noticed that the distance between them and us is a bit too big or something like that. So it's always quite good just to have a quick, brief catch-up, and then kind of just kind of like you say, just get them back into the game, hype them up, make sure that we're ready to to go back out there and do what we do. Oh, 100%. And um, we have now been streaming for 56 minutes. Should we should we give it an hour, Cindy? We can do. <laughs> <Not well. laughs> just a nice round hour. I um, The room has just... My, my bedroom has just got significantly hotter throughout <laughs> this hour. Um, and I'm probably gleaming. I have a gleaming forehead on the stream. But um, I think that the the fact that we've ended this season with the second in the league and the team who are above us are obviously um, we did score that beautiful 62 pass goal against them but they are a quality team New London and um, it will be interesting when we do finally get to go at them again because we're due an away fixture or a home fixture no we're due an away fixture with them, aren't we, in the league? Uh, we were, yeah. Um, so we might have to save that for next year. But, um, yeah, I mean, like you say, we scored that great goal against them and still managed managed to lose the game. So, yeah, we were due to play them play them away. But we were we were hot on their tail in the league in terms of trying to put that pressure on them. It's just unfortunate as to when the, the league has stopped. Um, would you say, what, would you say that uh, the... Clapham semi-final was your favourite uh, sorry the Palace uh, which 
I'm going to ask it properly. Which game was your favourite of the season? <laughs> because we've, we've talked about Clapham and obviously the goal at New London, but do you have anything that just stood out to you personally? the cup final was was great against Palace but I think probably from a personal point of view I think I probably played one of my best games of the season against Clapham in that game so I would go with that one selfishly <laughs> if if um what am I my, one of my favourite my favourite games is to watch are uh, I, I really did enjoy the 5-0 um because as a commentator I just it, as each goal goes in I get more and more excited and like sort of it's almost like um, just like a toy that you wind up to the point where it just <laughs> goes mental <laughs> because I just like to escalate from one after the other but um, I feel like Duncan's going to be mad at me for saying this but I really really enjoy in the worst way possible I really really enjoyed that Walton semi-final um I mean, you say Duncan, I'm not very happy about you missing Well, I didn't enjoy it in the sense... I didn't enjoy it in the sense of the result that we got, but it was just... It was really... really oh, it's hard to explain. It was... You couldn't, was you couldn't make it up. It was, you know, stranger than fiction almost, the way that you had the questionable... Um, you had the questionable... Offside. offside and then just in the space of 90 seconds it went from one way to another and um, it was one of the few scenarios where I've had a full uh, I've, I've had emotional reactions at Gander Green Lane but that one really just hit me in the gut and um, yeah I mean even as a group the the emotional rollercoaster of that game well not even the whole game the last five minutes um, it was mad it was, it was a, to be fair it was an evenly Evenly match contest for the majority of the game, and that probably made a bit of a difference as well because some of the games we've played at home this season haven't been necessarily that close. Um, but yeah, to go from like the highs of thinking we've scored a last minute winner to obviously conceding well, n- is, is not frustrating. Only. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not trying to put salt in the wounds. It was also going to be uh, Haley's first goal for the club. Um, and yeah, for me, the 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 reason why that game stands out a lot to me is because in the in the year I've been watching you, I've seen nothing but pretty much dominance. And if you have lost a game, it's usually because you're maybe uh, you were even slightly unfit or just maybe not up to the task but you weren't nece- yeah. you weren't necessarily the worst team um, and this team this game against Walton um, I came I sort of turned up thinking yeah you're going to uh, just do the business as usual and they did really give a good balanced battle between one another like between the two and there was some good matches on the pitch um, in terms of like Graham versus one of their midfielders and vice versa, and it just it all it all culminated in that big finale, and it is a real kick in the teeth that it wasn't in our favour. But um, if I was just to take away any Sutton bias and say as some as just as a football fan, that was real drama um, on a on a small level that was just so enjoyable to watch in a it horrible was way. <laughs> And I can I can only just I can't imagine how it would feel like being on the pitch, um, experiencing that sort of um, flip flop, which is a terrible way to describe it. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like, yeah, no, I mean it, it wasn't nice. Like, <laughs> obviously, it's the easiest way to describe it. Um, yeah, I mean we are still unsure as to whether Haley was actually offside or not. Um, but then you can't concede the goal we conceded in the last minute and expect to win a game. So I think as a, as a group, we kind of... I don't think we underestimated Walton in any way. Like you said, they were, a, they were a really good side and it was strong battles, as you said, all across the park. So uh, I think it was my own underestimate. It was my own underestimate. Oh, you underestimate. I, 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 <laughs> I, I just... I go into every home game... Obviously, even with my research, I go into every home game thinking, well, it's it's... 
it's the girls at Gander Green Lane. We're gonna we're gonna win because <laughs> it is. I love that confidence. Because <laughs> it's a very it's a very constant uh, occurrence, and we well we hope that it's gonna be a constant occurrence again soon in 2020. Um, we don't want to have to wait much longer, but and I don't know if I have to say this to uh, whoever's listening, but yeah, once we've stayed indoors for the right amount of time and we can then all get out and go play, watch football, do whatever we like, meet up with people, go into the uh, the clubhouse at Gander Green Lane, have a Guinness, <laughs> see what's on BT Sport. Um, but no, it's been really nice talking to you and I hope that whoever's been watching has learned um, a little bit more about the women's team than they did because we've had some cracking performances we play some great football and um, we've got a really really good team it is a shame that we got cut short but no one's going anywhere so it will just resume and I, I can well Cindy the captain will assure any uh, Sun United women's fans right now that they are still working hard they're still staying fit and they're getting ready for uh, when they're allowed back out there we are and we will be ready when we are allowed to go any final messages Cindy do you have anything to plug obviously you are the uh, social media and um, well you're with working with me and Duncan and James and such with the first team media is there anything that you uh, any more challenges planned <laughs> uh, maybe we never know what's up my sleeve um, we've got the um, before they were famous going on at the moment check out some baby pictures of some of our squad get to know what they look like when they were the younger um, we have the girls academy starting next season so if anyone is interested for that definitely get in contact with Martin Williams at SutternUnited.net there you go cheeky little email as well there's um, some yeah there's a great opportunity to be taught by some really good people because um, the whole infrastructure of Sutton has this style of play that they want to put across and it's um, it's really it's really great to see that from the very young kids up to the women's and the women's under 21s that the uh, the effort and the desire to not only create footballers but to make good footballers who try and play proper football uh, that's something that we should all be proud of supporting uh, Sutton and working with them as a whole yeah, definitely. but please do check out Sutton United Women's on Instagram and on uh, Twitter, it is just Sutton United Women, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. I think it is Sutton United, it might be UTD on Twitter. Um, Sutton United Women on Instagram, Sutton United Women on Facebook. And you um, will know... You some highlights on YouTube as well. Yeah. On the SUFC TV. The, what you're watching us on right now, you, you will see, you can see highlights of every single uh, home game that we've done, uh, include, with my lovely commentary over the top. And, um, oh, actually, Connor, while you're here, my favourite moment of the season so far was your commentary for Tamsin Potter's absolute worldie. <laughs> I, I think it was against Hackney. It was like a Martin Tyler, Gary Neville, professional, full-on excitement. Uh, I feel like we should uh, provide the listeners with, uh, the, the viewers, the, find the clip of it just before we go. Um, I mean, it is worth seeing. I'm going to have to get it up now. <laughs> it was against Hackney. Yes, it was the 4-0, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Um, I wasn't at the game, but I've seen it since, and the commentary was, was amazing. Yeah, and I'm, goal, obviously. I know exactly what you're referring to as well, because uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the word Potter that I think is uh, what... <laughs> keyword well while you're finding that we also put out today our we will be holding trials obviously when we can go back outside um so they we have dates um they'll be confirmed once obviously we know when we can venture again um so i don't know who's listening but if you you think you're capable of joining our squad or adding to our squad definitely get in contact i think the email address is ladies at sunnyunited.net so just drop them an email with all your details 
we will see if you can join us next year. And you know, if you just want, or if you just want an hour on that lovely four G pitch, then I'd recommend that as well. <laughs> We're so lucky with the facilities we have, and as you said, the the coaching setup we have as well is. We're really lucky. Okay, Cindy, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to play us out with just the final comment, the, the, just a clip of the commentary. For, Here she is now. Um, She's looking for Sutton options. United versus... Oh, um, Jump the gun there. But um, it's thank you for being here for a whopping one hour interview. I, I'm so proud of us that we had it in us. Um, <laughs> we've, we've kept the content flowing in my opinion <laughs> we have and, thank um, you for having me no it's been an absolute pleasure obviously due to um, certain circumstances um, we can't necessarily use the whole of Sutton United but it's great that we can give um, the women's team a bit more love because um, it's. I think it's if you're a Sutton United fan, it will, it's hard for them not to, for the women's team not to grab your attention after a while because it's a, it's either success after success or um, did you see that win? Did you see that goal? And there's a lot to be talked about, in my opinion. Agreed. Well, thank you very much. Um, we will see you uh, either on another stream or when the season returns. Good luck with self-isolating. Um, and yeah everybody go and subscribe to SUFC TV also um, Sutton United Women on Instagram and on Twitter and we will all be back very soon it's been my pleasure uh, any final words Cindy? Uh, thanks for listening guys take care everyone and Connor make sure you look after yourselves in these strange times um, and we will see you all soon well thank you very much and we will see you all uh, in the future Goodbye. Uh, so Here she is now. She's looking for options. Um, Wells dispossesses her for the second time as she sent off. Even better, left footed shot. Oh, what a finish! Tamsin Potter with an absolutely fantastic goal off her left foot. Fantastic work from Wells to win the ball back. The ball gets played through. The first touch brings it under control. The second touch with her left foot pulls it out into space. And then she just wallops it straight into the top corner. Takes a little touch off the crossbar and bounces right into the goal. And Sutton take the lead against the league leaders. 1-0. Helen King to take the corner. She takes a nice long run up. Looking like she's going to whiz it in, and she does. It's curl to it. It comes off the foot, and Nicholson is there to claim, and it's smashed in by Browning. Once again, set pieces being the undoing for Sutton United. The keeper is almost blocked off by her defence, and Clark Potter tries to get ahead on it. Howes doesn't know where the ball is. She's forced to spin. Wells gets the shot away and it's in! 2-1! Wells with a lovely finish with her right foot. Bottom left corner. The goalkeeper couldn't reach it. It goes through her hands almost. And it's a fantastic reaction to going back to one all. It's 2-1 to Sutton United. Wells with the goal. And there's been a slip on the ball from one of the Hackney players it's led to McNicholas being through she plays it into Butler who turns it falls to Wells it's 3-1 3-1 Sutton United Darcy Wells with the goal and the ball comes into the path of Howe who plays it through to McNicholas McNicholas plays it into Butler Butler turns the ball rolls into the path of Wells whose first time shot with the right foot goes into the left corner and it's 3-1 as the two-goal cushion seems comfortable. However, there's still plenty of time left in this game. And King puts the ball in. Nicholson gets the header on. And it's a great save from Hersey. The header from Nicholson looks like it might be going out. But then Lundy gets a left-footed volley. The keeper gets both her hands on it. And it will be a corner. Long ball over the top, looking for Browning. Neves comes across and clears it away. 
brilliantly done. And Diana Campo gets the right touch to bypass the left back. She now needs to bring it inside. Oh, Wells trying to get the hat trick. She has to knock it on. Ballers in! It's 4 1. An assist for, Wils, uh, for Wells. Diana Acampo with some fantastic work all the way down the right hand side. The knock on completely puts the left back out of commission. The ball across. Wells gets her shot away, but it's a bit of a scuffed effort. It spins out. She then composes.